Hey everyone, this is Melissa F. Kalen, the founder of the Michigan Aurora Chasers, co-founder of the Aurora Summit, and author of Below the 45th Parallel, A Beginner's Guide to Aurora Chasing. Um, now, today I want to explain the K index or the KP index. You, you'll see it as the K, the KP, and again, an index, it's a scale. Um, anytime you're trying to figure out what the Aurora forecast is or trying to detect the Northern Lights, you're probably going to see the KP. Uh, KP is actually a planetary average. That's what the P stands for. Uh, that's measured over a three hour period from magnetometers around the globe. So they take all that data, uh, they average it together, they average it over three hours, and that three hours may fall in the past. So here is I'm looking at a plot of KP over the day of September 23rd, 2023. I'm actually seeing three hour averages of how high that K value reached. Um, although it could have been different in different regions. Aurora is believed to be regional. So keep that in mind. Sometimes you're getting KP alerts, especially if you're using Aurora forecasting apps, but that three hour average is actually coming from the three hours behind you. Um, so it's not necessarily an indicator of future activity, although it can tell us about the trends over time. Um, so the K is a scale of zero to nine with zero being the lowest and nine being the highest. Anything below a K five though is actually pretty normal activity. And I'm going to jump to a chart from the windy app, which is a great app to use for cloud cover. There are many great apps out there, but obviously they have some great resources. So reading the KP index, if you have a KP one, two, three, or even a four, that's generally considered pretty typical aurora activity or geomagnetic activity. KP4 will start to bring some of that aurora down into lower areas such as the northern United States, um, but it's really not until we get to KP5 that we reach storm levels. Um, so a geomagnetic storm um, coincides with some of these values and it's talking about strong conditions that are going to um, make the aurora expand, possibly grow in intensity or movement or color. Um, a G1 storm is equivalent to a KP5. A G2 storm is a moderate geomagnetic storm that's equivalent to a KP6. At KP7, we reach a G3 storm or a strong storm. At KP8, which we've had several times in 2023 already, we reach a G4 storm or a severe geomagnetic storm. And then we max out the scale at KP9 or a G5 storm. Um, when those are recorded, it's a pretty historic event. It's very extreme. And there are implications for our infrastructure, not just the Northern Lights. So keep that in mind. Now, how does this look on the map? Um, the Northern Lights come to us from the north, from the North Pole, and they actually expand southward the stronger they get. So these numbers are always going to stay the same on these KP maps that are giving you guidance. These don't change. They're, they're telling you what value you need to see the KP at your latitude. Um, now, if you live in the polar regions, you might only need a KP 0 0.5 or a KP 1, places like Alaska or Iceland or Greenland. If you um, are in Canada, northern parts of Canada, you might be able to see Aurora with a KP 2, definitely a KP 3. Um, KP 3 can even be seen maybe low on the horizon from places like Maine or northern Minnesota. Um, but then once we get into a KP4, which would be right between here, that's when the aurora start to reach the lower 48 states of the United States. Um, and then a KP5 pushes that aurora even farther into the states so that we start to see some of that overhead. Um, so again, the northern lights, the stronger it gets, the farther south it's going to expand. So don't think of these numbers as latitude labels. This is talking about how strong the northern lights needs to be to push that far south. And at KP6, it can be seen in much of the Midwest, um, over the entire state of Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and even low on the horizon from places like Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, et cetera. KP7 is going to be even better. That's going to bring Aurora overhead in those areas. 
and um, and maybe be visible from the Mason Dixon line by KP eight, you're going to have Aurora visible across the middle of the country and farther South low on the horizon. KP nine has even brought Aurora as far South as Cuba, historically speaking. So earlier this year in 2023, the Aurora were actually seen at a KP8 from places like Oklahoma and Arizona and North Carolina. Uh, so it's pretty incredible how far the northern lights can reach to the south. But that's how to use the KP. Again, you kind of have to get a feel for when it's going to be overhead. This is a map from the Geophysical Institute at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. They have a great Aurora forecast set up on their website. It's very interactive and has a lot of explanations and terms and guides to help you get started. And an interactive map here, too, where you can look at different parts of the world. Um, let's go check out a KP6 from the other day, and you'll see that um, at these levels, Aurora will be strongly overhead in the middle of the auroral oval here. Um, maybe a, a little bit fainter or harder to see on the edges, or, or that could possibly be overhead. But then there's often this viewing line. So if you see a line below the auroral oval, that's telling you if you're really trying hard at it and you're you and you're finding dark skies and using all the tools available to you, you could see Aurora low on the northern horizon from as far south as these locations um, during that KP value. So that's how to use uh, the KP index. Um, take it with a grain of salt because, again, it is going to give you a three hour average and that can really throw people off, especially if they're trying to get real time data. But as always, I hope this helps you and good luck on the Aurora Chasing Trail.